I'm Denise Galoni. Welcome to today's episode of Empowering You. I'm in the studio today because I have a very special guest, Mark Ferrari. He's a local musician, singer, and songwriter. He has opened up for country royalty such as George Jones and some other huge names. You may also recognize him from singing the National Anthem of the Pirate Games and some other sporting events in Pittsburgh. I can't wait for you to meet him. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It's gonna be today, Mark. Oh, thanks for having me, Denise. I am so excited. I've been waiting for this interview for a long time. We've been trying to schedule this. And let me just talk about, and I, when I met you, you were opening for a certain performer. Mm -hmm. But you've opened for quite a few performers. I have. And okay. I had the list. I had to print it out because there's so many. Okay. And some names that people will definitely know. Uh, first of all, country royalty, George Jones. Yes. You don't get much bigger than George Jones. Not in the country world, that's for sure. No. Uncle Cracker. Edwin McCain, Natasha Bedingfeld, CeeLo Green, mm -hmm. Blue Oyster Cult. Twice. Twice. Kip Winger, Dennis Quaid, Kevin Bacon, John Waite, Corey Feldman, and that's just a few of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm fortunate for sure. I'm very happy to have those, those opportunities. And if people don't know your name, they may recognize your face or your voice. Possibly. Because you sing a lot at PNC for the National Anthem for the Pirates. Yes. You did that a lot, a few times a season, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did it three times last season, uh, one time this season. Um, yeah, I, I do a lot of National Anthems for sure. Right. And if, at the Pearson Event Center for the Pitts? I did. I did Pitt first Louisville last year, and I'm doing one November 28th when Pitt plays Missouri. So that, I'm looking forward to that. That's in less than, you know two weeks from now. Wow, that's, yeah. and you do a lot of Veterans Day ceremonies. I do, I just did the Veterans Day ceremony on s last Saturday uh, down at the Carnegie Science Center. All the politicians are there and the submarine Navy vets are there and it's a beautiful ceremony. It has to be very moving too. It is very moving. The color guard is there, they do their march, I sing the anthem and then um, some of the local, um, I don't wanna say politicians, but elected officials, they come up and they, they give speeches and it's just to honor honor them and their service and you know it's just it's great to be a part of it and give back and at least for me I can give back through song you know right show right. my appreciation and you're like a local favorite around here uh, I don't know I don't know I mean it's it, I love that they call me and, and they ask me to do these things because I just love music so much so right and you'd be on you have been on CMT's Music City Madness Froggy mm -hmm. Radio DVE Bob FM, The Rock Station, KDK, yes. and BPTV. And BPTV <laughs> BP now, TV. yeah. Thank you. And you are a local BPTV person. You live in Bethel Park. I do live in Bethel, so I got, this is like my home turf here. A there bit. you go, home yeah. turf. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. So I know you have three CDs out. Mm -hmm. So before we get into what you're working on next, how did it all get started? Have you always had a love for music? I always loved music. As early as I can remember as a kid, there was always music in the house. My mom's always singing, they're always playing albums, Lionel Richie, all this stuff. And so I just I just gravitated to music. I was always singing, I was always the lead in the school plays, I always wanted to have the the parts that had all the singing, mm -hmm. had the most songs and things like that. And my parents made me play an instrument when I was younger, it was the clarinet, but I really didn't want to play the clarinet, but it helped mold me as, a, you know, mold my ears. So okay. I, I learned a lot about theory, I learned a lot about harmony, and so I just took all of that and then I took it to the guitar. And then, so it was a blessing in disguise playing at such a young age. But I've just always loved music. I just loved the way it made me feel. So then for me to be a songwriter, I wanted to create that feeling for mm -hmm. myself rather than just listen to the songs that make me feel that way. I wanted to make other people feel that way through my own music right. and myself. So that's kind of what led me to to do this. Right. So, and you do write your own songs. I do, yeah. Yeah, I have three albums here. So yes. the very first one is Out of Me. I did that back in the day, probably 10, 10 years ago, 15 okay. years ago. Uh, the second one is this one right here. It's okay. called Calling All Cars. Mm -hmm. 
and the third one is Living on Love. And I mean, I have enough material, honestly, for another two albums, but I'm working on the fourth one right now. So I pick and choose when I want to record a new song, just based on time and travel. Uh, most of those were done in Nashville, so I, I prefer to record down there. Oh, really? But I don't get down there too often now because in the summer I have a lot of shows and things like that. So if I go, I'm missing shows. So I always just try to find time. And when I do, I'll try to squeeze in a few songs. Now, so. is there a favorite that people say, you have to play this one, you have to play this one? I think um, Black and Black Gold. Black and Gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's Black what I was listening on the way over. <laughs> yeah, that's like my tribute to Pittsburgh. Yes. Um, instead of the Black and Yellow, this is the Black and Gold. Black and Gold. And this is it's just a rock song, um, just about, it's like a fight song, you know, and mm -hmm. it's a, it's for the Pittsburgh people and the teams and it gets played on DVE a lot and Froggy a lot too if we're, there's a playoff game coming up. Yeah. So um, definitely, definitely a crowd favorite. But so many people that have been with me along the way, there's certain songs that are like the staple, I would say, like different kind of blue, even though it's on my first album. Mm -hmm. um, people still just like love that song so much. But there, there's a lot. There's a lot of songs. I, I love every one because I view like each song as like a child. Right. It's like your child, you right. know, and it right. grows and, and it, you know, you watch it take shape and you watch how, it, you know, can form into a different meaning or you, you can perform it differently every time. So, you know, I, I love all the songs that I, I mean, there's a lot that I start writing that I'm like, these are no good, you know. Yeah. But if I like it, if I feel it's good enough, then I want to you know, let other people hear it. Hopefully they they feel the same way. Mark, what's the process? Like, I can't, I wrote a book, it took me years to write this 100 page book. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you, do you write the song first and put the music to it? Like how do you, what's the, what's your process? I would say that my process, cause it's all over the place sometimes. Okay. Cause there's no real like correct way to do it. It's just, I'll have the guitar in my hands. I, I'm, there's something that I'm thinking about or feeling and I just start with a tempo okay. and I start with a chord progression. And it's really, it's so just, out of the blue it's mm -hmm. not really thought out but i'm trying to capture some type of melody so instead of i don't have any lyrics obviously right. at that point but i just start um just kind of humming some some melody lines using some um enunciation things where i'm not saying a word i'm just making sounds okay and that's where i kind of like it just kind of forms that way and then once you have a melody line you kind of put the words in in there and see what works but tempo makes a big deal if it's going to be an upbeat song or a slow song. Um, and then it just kind of starts to come together. So those those little sounds you're making that just mm -hmm. don't sound like anything start to take shape, that start to become words, start to have a message. And then it just grows from there. So really, I like to write a chorus first. If I have a really strong chorus, I feel like my verses come a lot easier because the chorus is the, the main thing that people are going to remember. So I always try to do that first and then I kind of build around the chorus if I would have to pinpoint like my, my strategy or style. Yeah, that's, so. just, that's just amazing that you can do that. Uh, thank you. It, it takes time. I mean, I'm always trying to get better. Mm -hmm. And I feel like each album just got better and better and better. Uh, but it's still not, you know, I'm still always trying to get better. I think, you know, if you just sit back and think, oh, I'm, I'm as, this is as good as you're going to be and I don't have to get better, then... I don't know. I just you can always grow in whatever it is you're doing, right? So I never like take it for granted. Always want to write something in my mind that's better than the next. So, so. Do, you, do you always in your head have something going on, like a tune, like you're making dinner thing, and it got some. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. There's always a melody, and you know, with the with the phone, with the voice notes. Mm -hmm. If I really come up with something that I'm like, oh, I don't want to forget that, because I forget a lot of things if I don't record it. Because there's so much oh, going on. So we have so much going on. Yeah, so I'll, I'll grab it. I have so many voice notes in my phone, and I forget what they even are. Like, I'll just go through sometimes and hit them, you know, and play them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I remember that. And that just happened with a, a, a song I just recorded this summer called It's Gonna Be Great. I had this chorus just, I was just singing it with the guitar. I taped it probably three years ago. Oh, wow. And I was revisiting all the voice notes, and I found it. I'm like, I need to, this, this song has something. And, and then I just ran with it and recorded it, and that, that is like my newest song that's out right now. So it's, you know, it, it's such a good, upbeat, feel-good song. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a really good summer song. So that, nice. that's how that all comes about sometimes. Yeah, that's just amazing. I'm not creative at all. 
So that's oh, like a whole sure creative. Pro no, no, I'm, I'm really not. Oh, <laughs> I'm really I'm not. Sure now I can't play an instrument. I really can't sing unless we're in church and it's a big group. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't have that creativity. <laughs> So how did you get started opening for these acts? These national, I mean, these are some huge acts. It really started, I won a radio competition and um, the reward was to go to the Pepsi Roadhouse and do a one song opening for Van Zant at the time, which is Leonard Skinner Brothers, you yeah. know, some of those guys. Um, so I did this, I did one song and then the owners of the Pepsi Roadhouse said, hey, we loved it would you want to open for George Jones? And so I did my homework, obviously, George Jones is oh my an icon in country music. And this was back in 06. And so I opened up for George Jones, that went great. I um, got to meet him, their band leader, um, Kent Goodson, we wrote a song together that year. And then they came back the next year, they had me open for him again. It was just, I was, it, it just opened up so many doors that that moment. That one thing. Yeah. So from there, it just snowballed and I made connections in Nashville and that's where I record all, all my stuff now. And, and then one opening to the next, to the next, to the right. next. And then everything just leads everywhere to the radio appearances, to the national anthems. It's just, that's the modified quick version of it. Right. But sure. That's where it started though. Yeah. George Jones for sure. Yeah. And that's why I loved doing the show, empowering you. Because mm -hmm. someone could be watching and you're doing what you love. Mm -hmm. It's just obvious. Your I face do. just lights up when you talk <laughs> about music. And then all of a sudden this one thing happened that just really changed your life. It really did. It opened changed up, the whole yeah. trajectory of your life. It really did. It, I mean, I could still just be in my room writing songs and no one hears them. But to get that platform to, to say that you, were, you opened up for George Jones. That's huge. Yeah. That, people took me seriously after that. Sure. You know. Um, so I'm very grateful and very thankful for any of those opportunities, but you have to write your own stuff. Yeah. You know, you can go and I do covers when and we play so many shows. You have to fill some. You have to fill time. The time, right? but it's really all about writing your own material if you really want to break through or get those kind of opportunities. You just have to have your own stuff. So mm -hmm. I learned that a long time ago, and that's why I just. But you have to love it too, and I do love writing music. Right. Because when you do stumble upon something that turns out really, really well, it's just so rewarding for yourself, you know. So. And singing the national anthem that has to be so hard. I mean, that's that's a <laughs> hard song in front of all those people. I I hear that a lot. Everyone's like, "How can you do that? Did you ever forget the words?" Or, it's such a hard song. Um, it is a tough song. I think you got to just know your. You got to start in the right key. Yeah, well, yours is beautiful. I've heard uh, it. I haven't you. been to a game that you've sang it. I have to admit, but That's I've heard okay. it, and it's just because that is a hard song. And there's some people that are singing. You're like, whoa, uh, no. <laughs> this is this is not. Well, you not figure good. like everyone knows the song, right. so everyone's listening, and they they know the big moments, and they're waiting to hear. Is he going to hit it? Is he not going to hit it? Mm -hmm. How or just what's his rendition of this? And so you're being. I feel like you're being. You really not scrutinized, but judged you a little being bit. Judged. They're really listening because there's people that have just blown that away. That song, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the last one I did in August for the Pirates, that was on the that was the Hall of Fame game where Kent Okavi and, and some yeah. of the other Pirates got put into the Pirates Hall of Fame. There was thirty six thousand people in the stands. Dave Parker's on the field. Bob Pompiani's in right behind me in mm -hmm. his seats. I mean, it's just everyone is there. So, and everyone's watching. Yeah, everyone's watching, and it's crazy. You know, you walk out behind home plate, and I've done this a number of times mm -hmm. now, but, and then I look up at the Jumbotron, and I, I see myself up there as they're announcing me, and I'm just like, all right, you know, concentrate, you know. Yeah. But it's such a, it's a reward. I enjoy it. I, I love that I get asked to do it. I realize it's not about me. I, I'm just honored to give that, oh, yeah. you know, back. And, um when it's over is when I really get to feel the, the reward because people come up to me and shake my hand and they just, they, they'll comment on certain way I stopped at this one note or I did the end. Or, mm -hmm. So I always, you know, always, I definitely made it mine. I didn't want yeah. to do too much and, you know, jazz it up too much because right, people right. don't like that either. But, and I don't like it that much. No, I don't like that. that but either. I just wanted to put a little bit of my R&B uh, roots because that's kind of where it started for me. I really liked R&B and mm -hmm. harmony. So to grab the mic, not have a guitar in my hand, and get to just do what was always my favorite thing is to sing, I, I love that. I feel like the handcuffs come off and it's just like, all right, do it, yeah. you know, so. Is that the largest crowd? 
Yeah, 36,000. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's my largest huge, crowd so far. That's a huge amount. Yeah, I had a couple like tw in the 20s, 20,000s. Um, but Peterson Event Center was about 16,000 for that game. And uh, hopefully. That's a lot of people, Mark. It's a lot, <laughs> that's yeah. It's a lot of people. It's a lot. But you know what? I always still get a little nervous. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if it's 36,000 or like a, the Veterans Day um, ceremony where it was about 200, 300 right. people. It doesn't matter because I know. I'm giving this, to, I'm doing this, I'm performing this. Right. People, you know, it's a very respectable, respectful moment. Right. So it doesn't matter. I always get a little bit of the butterflies, but that's good because it means you care, you know, so. I found that when I walk on a stage, if I don't have those butterflies, that's when something happens. Yeah, exactly. Like, if I'm like, oh, I got this, and I walk out there, like, something happens. Right. So right. I, I get those butterflies the first come, and I'm like, okay, I'm okay, I'm out. Yeah. Now, do you look at yourself at the Jumbotron? Or do you like, try to ignore that whenever you're singing? I honestly don't look there. Um, Cause that I would, look that would out. would freak me out a little bit. Yeah, I, I caught myself on it at the beginning of the last mm -hmm. one. I never look up there. I look past it. I look out like at the, the, the cityscape. Right. You know, and I just kind of get lost in the clouds. Right. But I happened to see it, and I was like, oh. You know, I just, I just hurry up and like, <laughs> kind of looked away. Right. And, um, and I just do it. And it's... They have the lyrics on the screen, too, up mm -hmm. there. I never even looked at those. And you just can't rely on that. No, you no. You just have to, you have to trust that, you know, I've been singing this song my whole life. We right. know the anthem, you know, but you never know what can happen with nerves. And I've seen it. I've seen sure. people Forget the words. crash and burn, unfortunately, because of the nerves. So mm -hmm. you have so, to control that. So you just look out at the city and just yeah. don't think about the people that sit in the, in the stands and just sing it. Yes. Yeah. Just, uh, I just, I don't even focus on anything. I'm just looking at the sky. Right. You know, it helps. I'm sure. Yeah. But when it's over, it's it's so rewarding. It yeah. feels so good. Yeah. So you're working on your fourth album. Fourth, fourth CD. album. Yes. I have some singles that will eventually be on the album. One is called Long Way. Another one is called Finally Home. Another one is called Love Suicide. And the last one I just recorded was It's Gonna Be Great. And all different. I mean, they're all more rock but Love Suicide is probably the rockiest one of them all. Um, the poppiest so far is It's Gonna Be Great. But Long Way is a song that, um, I don't know, I feel like it, it, it moves people. It takes people somewhere. I also wrote a song that's, I didn't record it yet, but it's called Take Me There. Oh. And I wrote it around the COVID time my grandma passed away, unfortunately. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, but thank you. But it made me go to the guitar and uh, this song, Take Me There, it's about it's about loved ones and losing loved ones and just want to be with them. Mm -hmm. So uh, it really, it really um, pulled my heartstrings when I wrote that one or pulled from them. Or um, My mom loves it, obviously, because it was my mom's mom. Sure. Um, but it's a great song. I didn't record it yet, but I mean, I perform it. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my favorites. So I have, I have enough material to record the album because there's other songs that I still play at now that will go on that. Like rest in pieces, save me, uh, open your eyes. I have a lot of a lot of material. And you're not really one specific genre. It's not really R and B or pop or country. it's just a little bit of everything. I would say it's like it's sometimes it could be like all, not very alternative, right? Because I would say it's more contemporary rock. Okay. You know mm -hmm. where it's like more. It can be easy listening at times, okay. but it can also get a little heavier too. But not too heavy where you would want to change the station. Right. You know, when I'd go full production in the studio, then we have the electric guitars and the drums and the bass. But it really just supports the song because everything comes from here. Right. You know, it all starts, I write it with just this. Yes. By myself. And then we get in the studio and we build from it. So when you're having a bad day, do you grab a guitar? Or if you're having a good day, you grab a guitar? Oh, yeah, definitely. It depends on your, like, you, have a, you can have a great day and you want to play your guitar yeah. and, and jam and, like, let that out. You can have a bad day and grab it also and it helps you. It's such a therapeutic thing and it really helped help me through different phases of my life sure you know and, and being able to write songs is such an outlet you know you're feeling a certain way for some people they go to the gym or they'll hit a punching bag or they'll write mm -hmm. a book or a poem or write in their journals and for me this was definitely my savior for sure yeah. definitely I know we have a mutual friend that's how I met you and yeah. she went to, you went to school with her, and she said you were always in a band. You were always <laughs> singing something. I was always singing. That's Kelly Frost. Yeah. Yeah. We, we love to, Kelly. Yeah. Kelly's great. Um, we went to high school together. Mm -hmm. And she came to a couple of the Pirate Games when I did the anthem, yeah. too. So, oh, yeah. Kelly's great. She's doing 
great things too. But yeah, if you asked her about me in high school, it was always singing. Mm -hmm. You couldn't shut me up. Yeah. I think I annoyed a lot of people too. <laughs> as much as the people liked it, a lot of people were like, oh God, there's, there's Ferrari singing again. You yeah. know? Now, do you prefer singing by yourself or do you prefer in a band or does it just depend? I, I like both. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an energy when you play with other people. Okay. So um, I play with Brian DeLallo as my percussionist. He was the, he's a teacher at Bethel Park. He was the football coach at Bethel for about five years. So he's my percussionist. Bob Roski's a harmonica player okay. that he, he's at Bethel Park. Well, he works at Bethel Park. Um, J.R. Lockwood's been my longtime guitarist, lead guitarist, um, even rhythm guitarist. So I love when we're together because you feed off of each other and it's a bigger sound. But I also love solo. I, I love that you're not locked in on a drum beat. Because right. when you play with other people, you can't really go off the you know, off the trail. Everybody has but, their thing they're doing. Yeah, you have to stay in the in the in the song exactly how everybody knows it. Sometimes you can extend an outro a little bit longer. But when it's just acoustic, I can play whatever I want. I don't have to worry if anyone else knows it or not. And it's just there's pros and cons to both. Mm -hmm. But I, I really I love solo too. I do. But I also love sharing the stage with, with people. Yeah. So So what advice would you give someone watching that you're just living your dream mm -hmm. that may be afraid to start take that chance because it could be a lot of rejection also yes yeah. so what advice would you give someone watching I would say do the work you know if you really love something don't let other people tell you that right. uh, you know that's a silly dream or and eh, you might want to do something else follow your heart it's not going to get handed to you you have to do the work you do you have to go go get good right you know and then at that point no one can say anything. It's just you have to get to the point where you believe in yourself and you're proud of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But it definitely takes hard work. You've got to have tough skin. It definitely yeah. in the music business, you have to have a tough skin because sure. I've had many rejections. Yeah. You know, we're talking about all the acceptances, which are, which are definitely wins. Uh, absolutely. But we could talk just as long about the no's. Right. You know, right. so follow your heart. You don't know unless you try. Um, even if you try and you don't succeed, like, they say success is standing on a, on a mountain of failures. That's what it is in the end. Every failure that we have along the way, but it's going to make, it's going to pile up. And when you do succeed, you're standing on top of those. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of how I looked at it. You have to really believe in yourself and don't let other, don't let the negativity um, sway you. That was so well said, Mark. <laughs> Thank so you. when you were playing those bands back in high school, did you ever think that you'd be singing the national anthem at a pirate game? I never thought I would. I always wanted to. Like oh, right. I, I just always wanted to at any sporting event mm -hmm. at, for Pittsburgh. Sure. I just, I would dream about it. I would think about it. I, I, you see my, yourself doing it. Visualize yeah, it. My dad and I had, we've had season tickets, like a nine game package mm -hmm. to PNC Park since it opened. And I'm always sitting there and just, I love, I always await. You know, I can't wait for the national anthem. Yeah. I mean, who's going to sing it? Right. And, and I'm always, I know how I am as a singer and as a fan of music, I'm always like, I'm nervous for them. Yeah. You know, and I think, oh, they started this really high. How are they going to hit the big note? And it's just, it's always been something that I always just, I can't wait to hear it. My yeah. friends would text me, did you hear us singing the anthem of the Super Bowl? Or we'd have it on, and then we start texting each other, what do you think? Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. So I always wanted to, and now that I get to, and I'm, I'm asked to over and over, not over and over, but every season, it's just, I only wanted to do it once. My mm -hmm. dream was do I just it. want to do it one right. time and say I did it. And, and it's become much bigger than that. Yeah. I never thought that was going to be an avenue for me. I, I didn't even intend it to be. Music, you know, playing my music, sure. that's, that's my thing. But to have these little other, you know, one-offs of the, the, do the anthem here, do the anthem here. I always loved sports. I played baseball in college. And um, so to mix music with sport, sporting events, mm -hmm. I, there's not a better thing for me that way, yeah. you know. Well, we have a surprise for the people watching because you're going to do a song for us, aren't you? I am, yeah. What song are you going to do? I'm going to do a song off my second album. It's called Waiting For Me. Great. So we'll be right back with Mark. Have you ever wonder what he 
it's like to love a woman yeah. To really love somebody It's not right, it's not fair There's so many people out there And we all just wanna fall in love Will I ever Find someone who makes me feel complete Steals my breath, knocks me off my feet Can it be? Is it only in the movies? And I just wanna fall Is she on the TV screen? Is she in the magazine? Does she know my name or know my favorite song? Is she beautifully insane? Is she crying from the pain? Is she asking herself, where did I go wrong? I know she's out there and she's waiting for Understand, I'm only human, I'm a man. Yeah, I know just where I stand and who I am, where I've been, and I know just where I'm going, and I know the best is yet to come. Come, is she on the team? Does she know my name or know my favorite song? Is she beautifully insane? Is she crying from the pain? Is she asking herself, where did I go wrong? I know she's out there and she's waiting for me. She's somewhere else tonight. Is she right before my eyes? Will I ever get this right? Is she on the TV screen? Is she in the magazines? Does she know my name or know my favorite song? Yeah, is she beautifully insane? Is she crying from the pain? Asking herself, where did I go wrong? I know she's out there. I know she's out there. She's waiting. I'll be waiting. I'll be. She's out there Baby, I know She's waiting for me Mark, thank you so much for performing that song. It was incredible. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having we me. We really enjoyed it. it. I know the whole audience enjoyed watching it. Well, I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching today's episode of Empowering You. I'd like to thank my guest, Mark Ferrari. He sang us an incredible song that he wrote. Mark is actually living his dream and showing how hard work and dedication can help you live yours. I hope his story empowered and inspired you to go out and live the best life you can. Thank you for watching and see you next time. It's gonna be great.